Welcome in to another episode of the Starting 502 Podcast on the State of Louisville Podcast Network, powered by Kern's Corner. I am not Presley Meyer. This is not Jay Cook. I'm Jacob Lane, stepping in here for Presley as he is out, I believe, in like Seattle or something. I don't even know where he is right now. <laughs> and this and this is Matt McGavick, and this is not from the pink seats. <laughs> that's right, right. We have infiltrated the football from football to basketball, man. That's so funny. Uh, but our fellas, Jake and Presley, are both out today. So this show is going to look a little bit different. As I mentioned, I stepped in. But both guys on Saturday over the weekend, I don't think they knew this was happening. Both guys got engaged on the same day. So congrats to Jake. Congrats to Presley. They have found their soulmates, taking the step and plunge into marriage. Uh, super happy for them. And so they get the week off. And because <laughs> basketball doesn't sleep, Matt, we're here. We got to talk about yeah. basketball. I couldn't think of, help but think of that old Gatorade commercial that was like, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Right. And so we're going to talk uh, quite a bit of basketball on the show. Um, there's a lot of news here as things are starting to heat up uh, post hiring of Pat Kelsey. And I know Jake and Presley talked through it. Right after the press conference, uh, I think last week or earlier this week, I've lost track of when that even was at this point. Um, but we're going to talk through some of the news since then that's come out, uh, as well as just some of the expectations and player commitments um, as we start to t- take the next step into the roster build. Um, I want to also mention that we'll have uh, that I'll have Ty Spalding on. Ty Spalding of uh, Cardinal Sports from the Rivals Network will join us or should, will join me here on the show right after uh, Matt. And uh, we're going to talk some some specifics about recruiting, about the coaching uh, staff of Pat Kelsey, and then just some of the the things that have been going on. And it's a really fascinating interview, including some some tidbits and nuggets that you might want to tune in there for. So um, all that happening here on Starting 502 Podcast, uh, powered by Mr. and Mrs. Bourbon Company. Be sure to check them out. Their bourbon is now available to be shipped directly to your doorstep. You can check them out online. Uh, at your local liquor store if you're here in the area or uh, the surrounding areas. But Matt, we got a lot to get into because Pat Kelsey has hit the ground running. Um, we, we now have an idea of what his staff is going to look like. He's gotten some player commitments. Uh, the news of recruiting has been heating up. So let's just start. Let's just start with, let me kind of back up and more general question here. What was the press conference like? What was it like? You know, you got to kind of do that little like tour and follow him around, which I find to be very creepy. It's weird. I don't know why. They, I mean, I get it, but it's just weird. Uh, but you got to be a part of that. What was that day like? Like, how would you describe just the atmospheric change that took place essentially in a 24 hour period? I, I had heard from, from obviously all over the place that Louisville was getting basically someone extremely high, strong and energetic as as Pat Kelsey is. That's not something you can really quantify unless you experience it yourself, because I mean, I've. I mean, the way that Little Athletics has gone the last few seasons, I've had my fair share of introductory press conferences with head coaches. You have? So I got, yeah. yeah. You've had, like, I mean, goodness gracious, man. What have you been to, like, five of them since you've been covering Louisville? Four or so, I think. Feels like a uh, lot. Regardless, like, I was just kind of going through the motions, like, yeah, I know what to expect, this and here, this and that. And then Pat Kelsey just kind of comes in like he's, like, about to take the ring at WrestleMania. Like the, the energy and aura surrounding him is immediately noticeable as he's just walking up to the podium. And then of course, Hurd and Dr. Gonzalez, um, not Dr. Gonzalez. That's another, that's another president. Yeah, Dr. Right. Schatzel made their opening uh, comments. And then Kelsey gets up to the podium and you can tell that he has done this before. In Mom, terms of just like speaking dude. to the public and capturing their attention and reeling them in hook, line and sinker and keeping them engaged and enthralled the entire time. I had no idea where that dream tour was going, but I didn't I'll either. tell you what, he, I didn't it either, landed. Man. It did, but I'll tell you what, if you close your eyes, he's a mega church pastor. Like, that's the way he speaks, the way he, like, tells the story. Like, I just started listening to him, and I'm like, I can totally hear this dude preaching at Southeast Christian Church right now. Just like, but you're right, the command of the room. Everyone was just, like, on the edge of their seat with Every word, I, I mean, I don't I don't think it was even like that with Chris Mack, man. Like, I just, it felt so interesting watching the press conference. My wife and I, like, literally sitting right where I'm at right now, Matt, on the laptop. I'm like, I mean, I, I'm just enthralled with the, the I, and I know it's just coach speak, but it goes beyond that because you saw the energy. The the way that, that Mack had people, like, you know, kind of on the edge of their seat, waiting with bated breath is what he's going to say, was partially because of, not so much he, he doesn't have an electric personality. I mean, he's not nearly what Ke- Patrick Kelsey is, but I mean, he's he's got some personality to him. But he has – he's got 
a more extensive resume than Kelsey has had up to this point. With with Kelsey, he legitimately captivizes people purely based on what he says. He he could be insert X profession here, and you he he it doesn't matter what you do. He he's someone who's going to be he's going to keep them on their edge of the seat base and just motivate the hell out of you essentially. Yeah. I mean, I've heard guys with right bicep tattoos are cool. I don't know. I can't say that from experience, <laughs> but I, um, yeah, he just, he, he seems like just a really down to earth dude, but one that when it's time to go, like the mode switches and it's very much that energy is funneled into discipline and motivation and being able to teach the game of basketball. I mean, we haven't even gotten to any of the basketball acumen yet. Like, yeah, I know we we have all off season for that. And this show, they're going to break it down. Jake has done a great job of kind of compiling some clips to kind of walk through what what Pat Kelsey is and all of that. But just early on, he's winning with the energy. Like, and the to be honest, like the bar is so low that it's like he cares. You know, like that's what that's that's we're we're happy because he cares. Finally, somebody cares about us the way that we care about the program. The best way that I can put it is that it, it's obvious that like throughout the whole coaching search. I mean, if you were saying Pat Kelsey was your number one chance, you're probably lying. I mean, everyone wanted Scott Drew. I mean, it was going to be hard to get him away from Baylor, but everyone wanted Scott Drew. And then when it became clear that, okay, he's saying, no, they're going to focus on Dusty May. You know, Dusty May is going to – Dusty May was like the best of the rest. And then after he said no, then you've got an amalgamation of candidates. You had Gene Holloway. You had Josh Church. You had Amir Abdul-Rahim, who I personally was high on. There wasn't like a clear cut like third guy. So mm. then by the time you get to Pat Kelsey, you're just like, okay, we'll see where this goes. So while he might not have been the candidate that fans initially wanted, but he might be the coach that Louisville needs right now. If, if yeah. for anything, it's because of the energy he brings. The I mean, Louisville basketball from a whole from a vibe and energy standpoint because the last two years is dead on yeah. that front. Yeah. Like the, the buzz and allure of the program was, was nothing because it had fallen so far. So his energy in the short amount of time he's already been here, he's already re-energized the fan base. And I know it sounds obvious, but it bears saying he's proven from an X's and O's standpoint that he can coach. Now the recruiting acumen, it's, he hasn't done it in the high level for a little over a decade, not since his Wake Forest days, but he does have a little bit of experience there. And plus what we've seen on the fundraising and the NIL and the 502 circle front, I mean, they'll take care of that part. Just get some of those high profile transfers or recruits on campus with NIL. And then once they get in a room with Kelsey and they kind of have those conversations of how he can fit into my system X, Y, Z, all those type of conversations. That's how Kelsey could probably get some of these higher profile guys to commit to Louisville and help elevate them to where Louisville is traditionally used to. Now, another way that I said, and I said that on an interview with uh, with Wave, while Kelsey's ceiling is kind of do be determined, it's it kind of, we have to see how his style of play translates to the power conference level, what kind of roster he brings in, because there's only two scholarship guys on the roster right now but his floor is tons higher than it was under the previous regime i mean that that sounds silly because the floor for the previous regime was through was through the ground yeah but at the very minimum you're going to get a program that is should be from day one extremely competitive right out of the gates and that's just something that louisville needs right now and with that ceiling it could be somewhere where later on down the line we think, okay, like, yeah, Louisville is back to, you know, being competitive on a nightly basis, but it's, it's just the guy who can, you know, carry Louisville into the future. And then, but there's also a chance of, oh, wow, this is exactly who Louisville needed at a time like that. And he is the guy who can guide them back to national relevance. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you're, you're spot yeah. on. And Presley and Jake walked through, you know, several different coaches who have moved up from the mid-major ranks to the power ranks and how tournament success and how tournament appearances doesn't necessarily equate to success and championships, right? Danny Hurley comes from a very different background than a Nate Oates and a 
Eric Musselman and, you know, all these different coaches who have been at that low major and mid major ranks. So there's really no barometer to know whether Pat Kelsey is going to be successful. Chris Mack had everything in the world going from him to make you think that he could win a championship at Louisville. Right. And while right now it doesn't seem that Pat Kelsey has the experience to do that, as we've seen with Nate Oates, all it takes is a little bit of time being able to be successful in the, in the portal, being able to land recruits and then being able to freaking coach like that is the, that's it. And so we're going to find out pretty quickly. What I feel confident in is that Pat Kelsey, Matt is going to be able to coach basketball. I think the teams yeah. that we see at Louisville under him, that's never going to be the question. I think the question and until we see it, the question at least that I have is can you get the level of player that it takes in the ACC to win the conference, compete in the top four, which means competing with Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, Miami, the big schools, right? And not just be a six through nine team. I don't want to be a six through nine team. I want to be a one through four team. Nice. And so... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, man, yeah, so point being, we want, we want to be a top four <laughs> seed, right? So... We have the we have the faith that Coach Kelsey can coach us to to that level, but now it's all about can you get the players that compete with the Dukes and the and the the big schools of the world, and that's what w remains to be seen. But what we know so far with Pat Kelsey is that he's got a culture. It's very evident how he's going to implement that. Like it is very much through a love them up, but tough discipline and being um, you know held accountable and really understanding how to develop basketball players, not just like. Kenny Payne was really good at how to make basketball players not good. That's what his specialty was. Like, you come in and you're good, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make you not good. Um, I think we're going to see the opposite here. And we're getting that. We're getting an idea of what the team's going to look like. I mean, this new world of transfer portal and NIL, especially with the multi-time transfer rule, which I, Matt, I hate it. I hate it so much. I, they've got to find a way to limit some of this player movement so that not every single player on your team is going into the portal. But that's the day and age we're in, and Louisville is in a situation where every single player on their team is in the portal. Um, so Brandon Huntley Hatfield, Mike James, Caleb Glenn, Tyler Johnson, Trey White, almost, you know, it would literally name them and they're in the portal at this point. And so Coach Kelsey is starting fresh. Yes, there's still a chance that Brandon Huntley Hatfield, who listed Louisville in his top four schools, could come back. There's still a chance that Caleb Glenn or Mike James or – Sky Clark or some of these other guys could in theory come back. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't actually, I'm, I would say that it is a 1% chance right now that there is a single player from last year's team on this roster. Um, right. Because Matt, here's the thing, the NIL conversations with these guys is not going to go the way they want it to go. It's just not these guys, you know, some of them probably deserve a bag like a Brandon Hunley Hatfield, but can you justify paying big bucks to a guy who was here last year, who was part of a losing culture for two seasons, who doesn't necessarily fit your system. You know, is that, is that the risk that you want to take? And that's where I think the staff is going to look elsewhere and go in other places. But in your opinion, you know, if you're Pat Kelsey, if you're Matt Kelsey, are you keeping these guys? <laughs> is there anybody you want to retain or are you in the boat of let's just start fresh? You know, if, if we were sitting at a point where, not everyone had already entered the portal. Like, say there's three or four guys still left over. I think you could probably try and make a case to, to some of the players that you do want to bring back that, like, hey, we can offer you such and such, whether it be from an NIL or a basketball standpoint, and, you know, work with that. But <clears throat> now that Louisville has reached the point where literally every scholarship player – has entered the portal. And I remember I, I mentioned this to someone. It might have been to you, Jacob, in one of the several group chats that we're in. But I mentioned that when, like, right before the season ended, like, I wouldn't mind one bit if every single player on this roster went elsewhere, whether they graduated in the portal, tried their professional options. I, it, it would be a heck of a rebuild and a heck of a roster flip to pull off. Yeah, but it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for Louisville from not to have a complete and total clean break from the Kenny Payne era, not just from the coaching standpoint, but from the play like the player and roster standpoint. Because I mean, the stench that is the Louisville basketball right now is so bad that you don't want even an iota of that stench to stick around. So while 
I do think it's going to probably going to be difficult to get to get an entire roster. I mean, it's it's not going to be easy. It might serve in Louisville's best interest if they, you know, completely flip the roster. And I'm talking yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense. And I think that's ultimately what's going to happen here. Um, they did land two commitments from the transfer portal pretty quickly um, without having to go the route of, visits and all of that um, and that's because they're coming over from the college of charleston following pat kelsey and staff and that is point guard uh senior guard rain smith uh or i should say junior guard will be a senior this next year um <clears throat> coming from the college of charleston as i mentioned is one of their their best players last year a double digit score and then freshman big man james scott who uh has just an incredible amount of potential uh, oozing from his pores, six foot 11, 210 pounds, played what 16 minutes a game this year. And his per 40 numbers were just off the charts, like just mm -hmm. insane for a true freshman who kind of was under the radar. And so, what you have right now, in my opinion, is you're one of your starting guards and then your backup big man. That's how I'm kind of looking at this in terms of the roster build and where we're going to go from here. So, obviously, 11 more scholarships at play. Uh, Louisville has no commitments in the class of 2024. I'm not sure how much they'll look at the class of 2024. There's not anybody committed to the College of Charleston at this point. So there's not anybody that will be following them. Um, and there still could be one or two more guys that come from College of Charleston, um, uh, including a guy like Ben Burnham, maybe a Kobe Rogers. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but overall, they're going to continue to kind of take a step up from here with the talent that they bring in, Matt. And that starts with um, Terrence Edwards from James Madison, who is uh, visiting or, you know, in the midst of a visit or just visited um, as we're recording this now in the world of the transfer portal, Matt, by the time this is released, this will probably, probably be commit. outdated. <laughs> so yeah, take this for what it, what it is, but tell me what you, what you think so far of just the names that Louisville has been connected to. I know Brandon Johnson committed to Miami, you know, a big man out of ECU, but what do you just kind of think of the the recruiting board that's kind of being pulled together pretty quickly here in real time. I think we, before we get to that piece, I, I, I do think it's important for Kelsey to have at least a couple guys from his previous stop at Charleston. Now, Charleston obviously didn't play some of the best teams in the nation, kind of like Louisville did. But if you're going to establish a new culture at Louisville, an important piece of that is having players who already know what said culture is and who can help kind of instill said culture when the coach isn't around. So that part is important, and, and it also helps that um, James Scott and Rain Smith are were probably two of Charleston's better players. I, pers I personally, I do like Rain Smith, but I think that James Scott has the higher, much higher ceiling. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It depends on how 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 he can like attain that ceiling. He can get to that point, but I, I I'm excited about the potential for him. But anyways, it it's it's a good early. Uh, obviously, it's a week -ish into him being the new head coach, so there's still a lot of moving pieces behind the scenes that we're not privy to. But it's a good sign early that they're already starting to get in the mix for some of the more notable, you know, high, uh, low, not high, low major, mid-major transfers yeah. out there, like a Terrence Edwards, who was the 2024 Sunbelt Player of the Year. I mean, Louisville football grabbed the 2024 Sunbelt Player of the Year, and he's probably going to be pretty good next season. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other guys like Brandon Johnson from ECU. I mean, he just committed to Miami about 20 minutes before we start recording, but he had put Louisville in their top six. There's another guy um, – like um, Dante Maddox from Toledo, mm -hmm. who's who's pretty good. There's a few other options out there who Louisville has been, you know, in the mix for over the last couple of days. And I do believe that it's only going to, you know, get bigger and get more notable, especially with how this million dollar donation matching campaign from um, the 502 Circle and Rick Heber, like just over 48 hours in has already generated half a million dollars in, in donations. That's insane. That's two players. I mean, <laughs> that's incredible. Like just that alone, you know, is I would imagine that that's probably close to like a couple of players for your roster. Like that's and the, the momentum they already had, you know, prior to the to Pat Kelsey being hired and, you know, kind of the transition from Kenny Payne to the new coach. 
And then now this, you know, these monster donations that are taking place and the fan memberships that are growing. I mean, it's it's great to see because it's going to put Louisville in a place where they could, you know, they can compete with the top of the the top blue blood programs in terms of roster management and being able to land players. There's no longer the fear that because of your coach or because of your situation that you can't go and recruit an AJ store uh, from Wisconsin, who is arguably one of the best transfers on the market or go out and recruit a, you know, big name transfer from XYZ school. So there's a lot of opportunity for Louisville, Matt, to get in on whoever they want. Now they're going to be much more selective than that, right? Like Bronny James, for example, goes in the portal. Part of me is like, hey, you know, go throw a bag at Bronny just to say that you're a hip, you know, collective. But in reality, that's a terrible decision because Bronny James is not good enough to demand a bag that he's going to probably get. Uh, and so you see what see, I'm saying. Though. See, just cool. I'm of the opinion that I don't think Bronny James would actually command a lot of NIL because, you know, his dad is one of the two greatest basketball players in history. He's got money. He doesn't need more money. Yeah. I mean, his dad. Yeah. His collective is his dad. Like he that's 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 who's paying him. It's out of dad's pocket. But the point being is that Louisville now is going to be equipped to take that step up and recruit at the highest level and land these guys. Now, they didn't obviously get Brandon Johnson, who joins Miami. And with already a commitment from Lynn Kidd from Virginia Tech. So building, you know, that that rebuilding that post this year and having more of that's going to make them even better. So, I mean, you're starting to see, though, that, that it's going to be interesting to watch. They're in on guys like Jason Edwards, who is uh, another guard from North Texas, Tucker Anderson from Central Arkansas, Sean Moore and Farley Dickinson. And then you mentioned Dante Maddox. Um, and then Bryce Pope is another name out of UC San Diego. So it's a pretty diverse recruiting board at this time. Is there anybody – I know that you keep an eye on the portal, uh, but is there anybody that, like, just throwing names out? I'm not saying it has to be, like, the perfect scheme fit, but is there anybody that you like in the portal that you would want to see Louisville go after? Not in the portal who I really like, but that's just a conversation that we're going to keep secret for now. Okay. Well, that's that's totally cool. You keep that a secret for now. You hold on to that. And I guess I will give my – like, the, the guys that I like in the portal. I really think that right now, like – there are so many directions in which Louisville can go. They can go and get experienced guys. They can go and get younger guys. They can get production from the power five level or the power six level. They could go and get production from the mid majors or the low major ranks. And I think they will do that as they fill out these roles, right? Not everybody can play. So they're going to have to, you know, pick and choose. Like they get a commitment from Bryce Pope from UC San Diego. I don't want to hear fans complaining about that because Bryce Pope, like you need a fifth guard. You know what I mean? You need a fourth guard. You got to be able to build yeah. depth. And these guys were, if you get that guy to be your fourth guard, like you're in a really good spot. I'm not saying he will be, but you get my point. And plus, like Louisville's in a position to where like they can probably get, or not get anyone in terms of like just by NAL, but in terms of like scheme fit, because like they've got two two scholarship players right now. Like what, if you've got like, over half your roster and you need like one or two guys more you have a better idea then of what you need as it pertains to like your team fit your scheme fit like right now Louisville could can go after pretty much anyone they want because they don't know what the makeup of the team is going to be yeah no you're exactly right I mean I think coach Kelsey probably has an idea of what he wants. But I mean, again, we've talked about this on the, uh, on this show when I've filled in and I know that they've talked about it is it's really a matter of what, what do you want to be in year one? I mean, I know they want to win, but what does that look like to you? Is that seniors? Is that lower classmen that you can develop? Is that, you know, proven players? Like that's the, you know, those kind of things that we're going to kind of see right now, it looks like they're leaning towards production. That's the big thing. Everybody that they've offered um, for the most part that I can, you know, just kind of looking through this list from uh, uh, Tucker Anderson was the freshman player of the year in um, the ACE Sun. Then you have Jason Edwards, who is an all conference uh, AAC player. You've got uh, Marcus Hill from Bowling Green. So, I mean, like these guys are from a various schools, but they are very competitive and have been very, very productive. So they can go that route. But um, there's also a lot of other pieces in the portal. I really like Trey Donaldson who just went into the portal today from Arkansas – or, sorry, from Auburn. I really like him a lot. I also like Katie Johnson from Auburn. Um, you know, I like Pop Isaacs from Texas Tech. He was incredible I for I forgot them, about Pop Isaacs, yeah. I really Pop like Isaacs, uh, yeah, get yeah. – 
the thing about pop and the yum, man, that's just, there's so much, so many different things that you could do there with that popcorn one. in the bucket. That's right, man. Then you've got, you know, again, the list goes on and on. Kobe Johnson from USC, Jamal Mashburn Jr. from New Mexico. Um, Scotty Middleton is a name that I, th I know I saw Chris Hatfield throw out on the timeline. Um, a freshman from Ohio State. I really like Boopy Miller from Wake Forest. Um, he had a great season this year playing alongside of Hunter Solace, and I think he could be a lead guard. Um, so there's a lot of different names in the portal. Um, I, I I think for me, the one that I really like the most is AJ Store. Now, again, I mentioned him. There was a report from Jeff Goodman um, that he asked or that, uh, you know, whatever, whoever is kind of handling his negotiation on NIL is asking for one million dollars. Now that is $1 million dollars. That is a that is higher than the average value of a minimum contract in the NBA. That's significantly higher than what he would make if he went and played in the G League, which is probably about what his ceiling is right now. Um, not likely going to be drafted after this big season, but he is a guy that was a bucket and one of the I would say one of maybe five players in the portal that can go and get a shot against any defense. Like he can lead you to victories, but Louisville is not going to play that game because when you're, no. when you're a first year coach going out and like th this guy asking for a million dollars is like a company going into shark tank and asking for, to give up 2% of equity. They always say like, what, like you're coming in here for sales. You're not coming in here to get a legitimate partner in shark, right? AJ store is wanting a bag. Like he's just going to get a bag at whatever school he goes to. And it may not be the right fit, but that kid is so talented. Like I would love to be the school. I don't think it's going to happen. That says here's a million dollars. Will you come and yeah. be the star for us in the face of our program? But I know. mean, when you've got Kansas saying thanks, but no thanks from an NIL standpoint, uh... Uh, yeah, and yeah. I think AJ Store's reality is going to come crashing pretty hard when you look at who Kansas got commit a commitment from yesterday and Zeke Mayo, who came over from South Dakota State. Like that's where they said, okay, you want a million? I can go get a guy who's got just as much production as you, and I can pay him three fifty. You know, so that's the kind of conversation that's going to take place here. And there's a lot of names out there that um, they could turn to, um, you know, from all kinds of conferences and levels. And it, that's the thing, Matt, that. I think is going to be interesting. I would like to see a guard that is, uh, or excuse me, a team that is guard heavy, plays two seniors, maybe a junior and a senior, maybe a red shirt senior and a senior. I don't care what, what I would like upperclassmen. And I would like mm -hmm. guys that are productive and come from schools where they have averaged double digits. They've led their team. They've done that and they can do it at this next level. So that's a Terrence Edwards, right? That's a guy yeah. who was the conference player of the year. He's Damian Lee, essentially, right? He's yeah. a conference player I mean, of the year and just needs that step. The one and done era of basketball, as short lived as it was, is gone. I mean, it's been proven over the last two, three years that the formula for winning a championship in college basketball now is Genius. experience yeah. and production. It's not these top 25, top 10 freshmen who were just loaded on his team, a la Duke or Kentucky. Like, that's not the formula anymore. At some point, experience in the game matters, and we've shown like a team like UConn, who is transfer heavy too. And, I mean, hell, the the best player in the SEC last year is Dalton Connect, and he was a he was a transfer. So, like, th yeah. this is just what the landscape of college basketball is right now. The best teams out there are the ones who have the most experience, whether it's with the same team or if they have previous stops along the way now do you need to bring in you know top tier freshmen and high school prospects I mean absolutely that that's obviously going to play a role and a factor in your overall team dynamic but to have those elite top tier young guys be like the driving force of your team that's not how you're going to win anymore yeah no you're you're exactly right and with uh, the way that it is now is if you don't play your first year as a freshman, you automatically go into the portal, right? I mean, that's the, this, there's just like, it's becoming this cycle. You, you, you're a freshman, you go in, you don't play, you go to the portal, you take a, you know, you go down a level, you, you dominate, you go back up a level. Like that's what's happening here. Um, and so you, you do have to be careful though. If you do bring in freshmen, they probably need to be freshmen that are going to play if you're going to bring them in here, because otherwise they're just a body to fill a seat for a year because if they don't get clocked, they're gone. I mean, look at the portal. Mm -hmm. A huge chunk of it is just freshmen who didn't play. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do there. But I really like – it sounds like you do too. 
you want you want to lean towards experience and guys that have oh absolutely versus going out and getting like a Trent Perry, the four star guard who decommitted from uh, USC yesterday and played in the McDonald's All American yeah. game. Yeah, no, I I want experience and I want someone who who's proven. Like, I mean, Terrence Edwards, I think, would be a great early addition. I think, I mean, not to say that I don't want Louisville to pursue like any top tier freshman should they could become available. That's all. I mean, hell. There's there's one guy who I think could very much ask out of his NI, NLI with Musselman in the mix to probably go to USC. I mean, Arkansas only has two signees in that class, one of which is Jalen Shelley, who has already taken an official visit to Louisville. Now, it was under the previous administration, but he has already seen Louisville. So if, if Louisville was going to go after any high school guy and Jalen Shelley was to ask out of his – NLI and I yeah. those, those three. I know, man. <laughs> I, I, I find myself like, wait, is it NIL or NLI? Yeah, I got you though. I'm tracking National Letter of yeah. Intent, right? Isn't that what it stands for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. She- Shelly is, is is one of like maybe a few high school players still in the mix that I would like to see see Louisville go after if he becomes available. If they yeah. want to focus 100 percent of their efforts on yeah. you know looking for experience you know mid-major guys some some high major guys too i wouldn't be mad at all i wouldn't be mad if they decided they wanted to keep tj robinson and bring him in as a development player i wouldn't be mad at that i wouldn't be mad if they go out and they go after um you know a guy like victorious miller uh to get silk the shocker in here to the yum center with master p Maybe that's why that? Hersey miller hasn't left yet yeah. <laughs> i want to get i just want to get a reunion of make him say oh at halftime and have that be like the most lit that would actually be like our our Louisville Live intro music. It is if they get Silk the Shocker's son and they bring back Hersey, dude. We gotta get Master P and, and Silk out there together. But there are some freshmen who are available. Liam McNeely is another five star. It doesn't sound like Louisville's gonna be in the mix there at all. Uh, but there are freshmen that are out there. Uh, but it does seem though that they're gonna prioritize the portal. And that's that's probably the smart move. We've talked about that a lot in the offseason as a fan base. And um, I know that uh, this show has talked about that quite a bit. Um, all right, Matt. Well, any closing thoughts, anything, I guess let's talk about the coaching staff just real quick for a second, uh, before we transition and, and I bring Ty on to talk more in depth and, and maybe drop some nuggets on the show. But, um, what do you think about Pat Kelsey's staff and starting to, to make the decisions to bring guys over from college of Charleston? You've got, you know, his right hand man kind of coming over who, by the way, man, like he is a no nonsense guy, Brian Cloman, I think is his name. Uh, he looks like he will beat your ass for looking at him the wrong way. He looks like he <laughs> is a football coach, like a defensive lineman. Um, and I am, uh, I'm really excited about that, but you bring over a couple of the other guys um, who have been with, with Kelsey and have that familiarity. Do you, do you have any qualms about that? Uh, but, you know, I know we've kind of seen it in a similar manner before. Do you think there's any issues with bringing over the, the CFC staff? I, I can understand why some fans would be a little bit hesitant just because you're bringing over a staff who doesn't have like a ton of experience at like the power six level. But I mean, if you're going to choose between bringing over your entire coaching staff or bringing over your entire team, bringing over your your entire coaching staff wins seven days a week and twice on Sunday, especially because Cloman has been with um, Pat Kelsey for 10 of his 12 years as a head coach. Uh, Michael Cassidy has been with them, with, has been with Kelsey the last three years, mm-hmm. and Thomas Carr has been with him for the last two years. And Pat Kelsey's best run as the head coach has been the last two years. So this is this is a staff who knows what he wants to accomplish. And plus, I mean, in in the modern game now, you can have five assistants. You, you're not handicapped, not handicapped per se. You don't, you aren't limited by having just three. Now, granted, the additional two they can't do off campus recruiting but that's all they're not allowed to do in the eyes of the NCAA they're as much an assistant coach as the guy in the lead chair is so and pardon my dog just starting to chew toys right next to me but you know but you got good headphones man that noise cancellation has really saved you from our beginning days of podcasting together oh my god it's it's done wonders oh there it is I hear hear the squeaky now he's there he is there he is (laughs) there's Maynard but yeah no and, and Kelsey still has two assistant coaching spots to play with so, like, I think there, if, of those two spots, you, I personally would like to see Kelsey try and get an assistant coach who's got experience and acumen as, like, a defensive guy. Because if there's one knock on Pat Kelsey as a head coach is that his defenses have 
aside yeah. from the year in which Charleston went like 31 and four, the defenses have not been that good. And then for the other spot, you get one who is primarily a recruiter who, you know, is going to take on a lot of the responsibility with recruiting and who is experienced with recruiting at this level. And, and I say that, and I don't mean Nolan Smith. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got to I, look, I, I don't ever want to be the, um, the fan that tells other people what to think or do, but we got to stop. I will with that, in this in this instance. I will. <laughs> yeah, we got to stop that. because there's been enough out there for people who are a fan to just like take the glasses off for a second and just look at some of the actions. And I think that that would be enough to realize, okay, he's not the guy we need back here. So, um, no. it's going to be interesting to see what what he does with his staff in that last couple of spots. But he's moving quicker than Kenny Payne ever did. I mean, Kenny didn't have his staff together until like the week before the season. It felt like, um, and we're not going to go get a director of basketball ops to be one of our recruiting coaches. Like that's not happening. And if it is, it's going to be somebody who's connected, not just some dad who showed up with snacks like Josh Jamison. So, um, <laughs> that is going to do it here with, uh, with Matt, Matt, I appreciate you jumping on with me and talking basketball for a change. I know we normally do the football thing, but, uh, it's been, it's been fun talking another sport with you. Be sure to check out the, the Louisville report of Athlon sports. Is that what I say now? No, it, it's still on SI. It's okay. I don't know if you've paid attention to like the the changing of the guard between the owners, but there's been a lot of messy stuff behind the scenes. I did. So I'm still I did. on yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, I'm still on SI, but like at least for the next two and a half weeks, there's gonna be some content still under the Athlon domain. But like ninety percent of my stuff is is gonna go on SI. And then right. after after like late mid April it's gonna be all SI. It's it's complicated. All right. I'm not gonna remember that. So just remind me. And if you are like me and you're not gonna remember that, just follow him on Twitter at Matt underscore McGavick at U of L report. Be sure to follow the show on Twitter as well at oh man, I don't even know if I know the at for this show. Goodness gracious. I should have probably had that on the paper before <laughs> I started. Goodness gracious. At starting five zero two on Twitter. Uh, at the state of blue and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel right here. Please subscribe. I think it's right here. It might be over there. If it's over there, hit the button over here. Oh, Oh, there we go. Look at that. Uh, it's hard directionally challenge when you're, when you're backwards here, right, yeah. uh, but we will go to a quick commercial break. Thanks to our friend, fine friends at Mr. And Mrs. Bourbon. And we will be right back with Ty Spalding. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Mr. And Mrs. is for everyone from a more traditional 90 proof to a cash drink that's smoother. In 2013, Russ going to the hole, and boy, could you use that right now. Mr. and Mrs. Bourbon covers tastes, all different tastes of preferences, six different bourbons that they're offering. Be among the first to try Mr. and Mrs. Bourbon, the official bourbon of the state of Louisville and the Starting 502 podcast on shelves anywhere you find your liquor, and now online at Mr. and Mrs. Bourbon.com. All right, we keep it moving right along on the Starting 502 podcast. Jacob Lane filling in for Presley Meyer and Jay Cook, and I'm joined by special guest, Ty Spaulding steps into the studio now. Ty, on your lunch break in the car, man. This is dedication to the Louisville basketball program. Who else, man? We don't have it any better, right? Man, it's been a busy, busy uh, week and a half. Busy week and a half. Feel like uh, feel like I'm I'm driving myself crazy. I posted an update last night at 1:43 in the morning. I mean, it's it's been a whirlwind, but um, I would rather uh, have it this way than than the the way it was where. You're just kind of guessing. You're kind of just trying to put uh, clues together as to what's happening. So I would much rather prefer the whirlwind than, than what we had past. Yeah. I mean, for a guy like you who runs a message board, which at the foundation is all about being able to provide information to the people in masses behind, you know, that the whole philosophy and strategy behind it. I'd imagine it's been tough for you all on the basketball side the last couple of years just to get anybody interested because, I mean, what you have is the same that I have because Kenny's not telling anybody anything, you know? So I'm sure what, yeah. what has that been challenging for you to like the last couple of years to still try to keep the, you know, the business alive and keep things drumming up and keep the fans engaged from that side of things? It's been a real challenge, and I'll share this story. I actually connected with one of the new assistant coaches on Pat Kelsey's staff uh, last night, and um, his message to me was, we're better together. So this staff, I don't want to spend too much on, on what, what went on previously, so we'll focus on, on what's going to be the case moving forward. Um, that's a message from uh, one of the assistant coaches on Pat Kelsey's staff. A quote, our mindset is we're better together. So I think that's going to be a uh, a refreshing tone 
Um, and I think, you know, I don't want to speak for the rest of the staff, but I, I feel comfortable saying not only will this coach, but the rest of the staff will be of the mindset. Let's connect with the media. Let's see how we can both help each other. Let's make this a, a, a mutually uh, beneficial relationship. Um, and so I think I think the fans are going to feel very, very uh, in tune with what's going on with the program. I mean, dude, you already see that over the last week since Pat Kelsey's been name head coach with, you know, the spaces and all the videos like this is a guy I know that, you know, we kind of heard this leading into the hire that he is a guy who gets the fan side of it. But I mean, Ty, just from what I've seen, I, I don't think Josh Hurd could have nailed that portion of it anymore. Like. Pat Kelsey yeah. walked up in here is just one of us, like just like that overnight. It's exactly what Louisville desperately needed. You bring up the coaching staff. Let's start there. If you don't mind, you, you kind of, that's a perfect yeah. transition here. So we get the report yesterday from Jeff Goodman that Pat Kelsey's going to bring over Brian Cloman, Thomas Carr, and Michael Cassidy from his staff at Charleston. Those guys have been with him the, the last couple of years, I believe. Um, what are, what are your thoughts on the, on the decisions to bring them over? Is there any concern in your mind about, and I don't want to, I don't want to put the bad juju out there, but you know, the past, uh, it was on another sport and would bring over his whole crew of buddies yeah. with him. And we saw how that turned out. Is that the situation here or what, what's your kind of perspective? So for me, I think we'll start with, with Thomas Carr. I, I had gotten a heads up on him, you know, the, uh, really the day that, um, the day that, that Kelsey was hired, um, was, Hey, look, be on the lookout for Thomas Carr. And why I, why I mentioned him first is he has a very unique background. He uh, he actually was the athletic director at uh, Word of God Christian Academy in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, awesome. which Home has John produced, Wall. Yeah, produced uh, John Wall, T.J. Warren, um, several several uh, other big time players. Um, he. He was the director of Team Loaded in North Carolina, which is one of the best AAU programs in the country. So basically, the person that reached out to me and said, hey, you know, Thomas Carr, this dude is a shark on the recruiting trail. Basically, the his reputation is that if there's a kid that has any sort of connection to the state of North Carolina, Louisville's going to have a chance as long as Thomas Carr is here on staff. So to get that out of the way – I'm not worried at all about recruiting um, with, with bringing the staff over. Um, you know, people that, that told me about Thomas Carr are much more entrenched in, in boots on the ground in the, in the grassroots uh, basketball world. Um, and they, they said this dude is, is one of the best recruiters on the East Coast. Um, he's, he's legit. So yeah. feel good about that. Um, Michael Cassidy. Um, I also am good here. I, I think um, I really like his his uh, his global background um, knowledge. Like just when it comes to um, his basketball knowledge outside of the U.S., a lot of what's going on in the U.S. starts in other areas of the world. Um, and he's he's been uh, in Australia, and um, he's he's really really. Uh, established himself as as just a guy that has really strong international ties and um he's worked with a lot of the players that have gone that NBL route um and I think you know just when you talk about being innovative and, and being ahead of the curve you need someone on your staff like this um that that kind of things before they become the the hot the buzz item they they, they they're they're looking for the, the newest trends they're right um they've, they've got their ear to the ground on, on what you know which way basketball is going to move next and i think this is what michael cassie does best um so i'm good there um and cloman from best i understand is you know a um just pat kelsey's you know right hand right hand man um he runs the defense is my understanding that tracks. Um, I, I don't know I, I don't know his background as well as the other two but Look, if you're going to be a coach that that prides themselves on establishing a culture and building a foundation, then I'm not going to I'm not going to second guess your decision to bring over uh, three staffers. But what I would say is that I think there is certainly a need for probably a one more recruiter to go with Thomas Carr, and then maybe one more. Um, just veteran, um, whether that's like a uh, 
you know, there's so many creative roles you can come up with nowadays to put guys right. in. You could, you know, player development, um, basketball administration, um, director of alumni relations, you know, whatever the title is, it, it, it doesn't matter as much to me uh, because I think there's a, a, a workaround to a lot of those uh, particular rules. So I think I'm, I'm, I would be, I would be a little bit more comfortable if they get uh, another recruiter that I, like I said, and then maybe another veteran and look, whether they're, uh, title as an assistant coach or, or as I mentioned maybe a, a director of player development that doesn't really matter to me as long as they're in the building um, in the meeting rooms in the film sessions uh, I think the, those two additions to the staff would make me feel a little better yeah yeah I think that's probably what most people are kind of in line with in terms of thinking that there needs to be just one more I don't necessarily say splashy hire but because we don't let's not sit here and act like everybody knows the assistant coaches across the country right like once it's guys like you that once that information gets out like we rely on you to tell us their you know their background and kind of give us that information on that being a big hire no one around here I mean look we got smart fans but no one is up to date on assistants and the big names because it's just those things happen so quickly guys move up the benches that you know guys are are doing things in the grassroots game that we don't see so it'll be really interesting to see what pat kelsey does where his connections take him you know obviously we're going to see him go into somebody else's house grab a coach to come here or at least we hope so what does that look like what are the ties what are the connections what what kind of areas do they recruit so on and so forth but i like the the different nuances of the staff that you mentioned there let's transition and talk recruiting now because that's kind of the big thing the portal is just insane right now i mean you got if you refresh on verbal commits or wherever you track joe tempted's twitter or Whoever, there's a new portal in the entry every couple of minutes. There's some big names even going in today. Um, Louisville has been active getting in touch with guys and already having visits. Um, you know, obviously, I don't want you to give the, all the secrets away here, Ty, but can you give the, the audience just a little bit of a, a tidbit on what is going on on the recruiting front right now? Yeah, so obviously, you know, if you can get guys on campus for a visit, you, you have to like your chances there. And uh, to my knowledge, the first – transfer they've been able to bring in on a visit was has been Terrence Edwards out of uh, James Madison he arrived late last night um I don't know if his flight got delayed uh due to the weather but he did he did make it to campus um and the initial buzz was that the staff feels feels good about where they're at uh I haven't really checked in you know today to see kind of what the update is there but you know, that's a guy that um is you know is one of the best transfers out there I, i'm trying to figure out what the staff's connection is here um with with edwards and how they had kind of an end there um but when whenever you can get a, a conference player of the year uh on campus a, a guy that would immediately be an impact player um you know i think i think i would say i feel good um uh, but but these things are very fluid especially in the nil world you just never know what's going to happen. Um, Sun Belt, um, you know, in the Sun Belt, obviously James Madison won a game in the tournament this year. So this guy can play at this level. I have no doubt about that. As far as where I think Louisville stands, as I mentioned, I, I don't want to go any further than than just me saying I feel, you know, I think they feel good about it. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of leave it at that. And another guy that I had heard very early on that I think would be a really good fit here and I haven't heard his name come up uh, in any recent conversations, but I think he's one worth monitoring is Jacob Meyer from Coastal Carolina. He's actually a, a native of Kentucky, Northern Kentucky, I believe. So, uh, and Pat Kelsey's originally from, you know, that Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area. So I'm sure they have some, um, some mutual friends and, and, you know, some, some circles that overlap. Um, but I think from a, from a scheme and fit standpoint, he would be a great addition, can shoot the lights out of the ball. Um, and I think that's another one to watch. So those two for now are, are kind of ones I'm I'm monitoring. Mm -hmm. I know they um they've they've made several lists um over the last couple of days. Brandon Johnson was one that I was really high on. It looks like he's headed to Miami. Yeah, um, that came came down in the last hour. Miami looks like they're going to reload uh, again next year with with Nigel Pack coming back, but that's a that's a different can of worms. But overall, I think the the general consensus is that this staff is is um has a very good start and a very good handle on the portal. 
And, you know, I think more than anything, and, and this can kind of lead us into our next conversation, you know, I think more than anything with this staff, you know, how they're able to recruit the portal well is, you know, there's one thing that, utilize the NIL, but it's another thing to be smart about how you utilize the NIL. And, you know, whether that's, you know, it got to have the conversations, you know, do we want to, you know, do we want to, you know, use up this much um, of, of our available resources on a single player? How do we want to spread it out? And I think that's what Pat Kelsey really gets. Um, you know, obviously, you know, Josh Hurd and others can't really speak put it like that, you know, in a press conference. But I think, you know, as best as I know, being able to 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 work a an NIL budget and where you can get the most out of your available funds, I think that's a, a part of being a head coach now that that really uh, is key. And I think Jeff Brom has, has done a good job at really grasping that. And I think Pat Kelsey on the basketball side has really grasped that. Um, so, I, I, look, I'm not – you know, the fact that, that visits are already happening and the, they're already getting in on, on lists and there's still guys going into the transfer portal every day. Um, I think I think things are in a much better spot uh, as we sit here on April 3rd um, than they were, you know, from, you know, April 3rd of, of 23, April 3rd of 22. And just to just to confirm that, I mean, you look at, you know, he's already got three staffers. He's already got a strength coach in place. Um, you know, I was even told by a good source that he's strongly, uh, seriously, seriously considering Peyton Siva as a potential staffer. So I think the urgency is going to translate into a nice portal hall. Um, and not even the, just the urgency, but obviously we know the, the NIL campaign that's out there. So I have no reason to believe, I have no reason to believe that, that Louisville will have trouble, um, you know, landing some some quality players and filling out this roster um, into a you know a contender an NCAA tournament team in year one. Yeah, and it's really interesting to hear you know some of the tidbits there. But uh, a couple of of things just to kind of point on to piggyback off of getting kids on campus with the NIL that they have in combination with the resources. I mean, it's going to be. I think for once Louisville is going to be the hunter here, Ty, and that they can bring kids in. They have the, the, the deep pockets now, uh, you know, courtesy of all these donations and things that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. And then the facilities that all of that, like it's all there. They are a sleeping giant that if you can get kids on campus, you're going to be able to wrap these recruitments up and not have to worry about them leaving and then making that decision. Uh, but I also really like to see the the depth and just the different types of players they're going after. They're going after guys ranging from freshmen to seniors, you know, guys that are six, three guards, guys that are, you know, six, one guards. You got big men that are six, nine, that can shoot the lights out of the ball. Um, I think they're really trying to create a diverse roster that is just filled with athletes, guys that play hard guys that win and then shooters. I mean, that's the one thing, man, you talk about Brandon, and Johnson, what's so disappointing about that commitment to Miami? It's a 40% three point shooter yeah. at 6'9, man. I mean, one of the best three point mm -hmm. shooters in the country. I mean, it's, it would be almost like Louisville's version of Blake Henson from Pittsburgh last year, right? So, yeah. point being, they're in the right spot. They're getting in there. They're in the mix with, uh, with Dante Maddox. There's some other names that are out there, as you mentioned. Terrence Edwards is on a visit. Um, from James Madison. So that's a very positive sign moving forward that they're going to be able to fill this roster out. Um, last thing here on recruiting, how uh, I talked a little bit about this before I brought you on, but what are you, what are your thoughts on the, uh, the, the decision or uh, what is going to go into retaining anybody from this roster? If that's the case, I don't believe that's going to happen. I believe they're going to start fresh with 13 new guys, but do you, do you believe differently or do you see it going another way potentially? Yeah. So I, I reported on Sunday that, that Ty Lohr and his family would be meeting with the staff in the next 24 hours. And, and it sounds like that, that timing lined up with, with what happened. Um, and look, I know there's, there's plenty of stuff out there, but I feel comfortable and confident in saying that, you know, when Pat Kelsey met with the team for the first time, you know, that we've seen some of the footage come out uh, through social avenues, you know, I'm pretty confident in saying that he had to correct several players, you know, pay attention, you know, when I'm talking, you know, eye contact, all that good stuff. And, you know, I just think it would be a a, a real culture shock for these guys. And, and look, I'm not going to even blame the players. I just think they got comfortable with, 
with doing things a certain way and not, you know, having a standard or an expectation to meet or live up to. And, you know, just things as small as eye contact, you know, paying attention. You know, I just think that the players, and I don't blame them, like I said, I think they, you know, if I was, you know, if I was a student or a player on a team and, and our coach or our, our professor, you know, let us, let us, you know, take, you know, let us turn in stuff late or whatever. And I'm not saying that happened, but I'm just saying it's easy to get comfortable when it's allowed. Um, so I, I really think a, a clean, fresh start uh, isn't the worst thing. Now, I do feel strongly that you know, two or three guys from Charleston were needed to kind of help the the practices, help guys understand how Pat Kelsey likes to do things. But just from last year's roster, I don't really think you need anyone. I mean, like some, some posters on the board were like, you need some of those guys back. It's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, do you need those guys back to show to show the new new guys, you know, where different buildings are on campus? Do you need them back to show guys like where the practice facility is? Like, I don't think those are legitimate enough reasons mm-hmm. just to bring guys back. No. Um, and and then you're it, talking about, you know, a potential clicking up of the team, you know, the old guy, Kenny's guys versus Pat's guy like that just kind of opens up, a you know, a can of worms. You got to make sure it seems like you find the right guy if you're going to keep them here. And the other guy that has kind of been lingering out there, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, he's listed Louisville or turned to Louisville as, a, as an option. I don't think the full court press is on him from Louisville's side to keep him in the fold um, just with the NIL demands. And, and look, you know, Pat Kelsey likes his five to be able to initiate the offense to shoot the ball. Um, I just don't know if the juice is worth the squeeze there with the with what you would have to – promise or what you would have to um you know what you would have to uh, you know use up from you know as I mentioned a, a resource standpoint I don't know that Louisville is is going to put the full court press on there my understanding is that they're not um so yeah if if there is someone that returns it would be uh from best I know it would be out of left field uh, at this point yeah, that's what it seems like. I mean, I think it'd be cool potentially to get a guy like like a Caleb Glenn back. But again, when you're talking about a complete rebuild, sometimes it makes sense for all parties involved to separate uh, and go about their ways. Um, one thing to note is that um, at College of Charleston's first team all uh, conference big man, uh, Antti Brovich, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, did announce today that he is returning back to Charleston and will play for Chris Mack next season. So that's a huge pickup from Chris Mack. Uh, retaining him again a first team all conference player the guy I really like is Ben Burnham wing six eight six nine can shoot the hell out of the ball super athletic he had double figure points last year in 24 games hit two or more threes I think in 14 games he's a culture guy hard worker probably going to be a role player right but those guys coming up they are going to be more likely to fill you know potentially coming over from CFC would be more likely to step into roles like that um, I think at a new program taking that step up than say bringing in a big name uh, transfer portal edition as you kind talked about with some of that resource management all right man this has been fascinating everyone uh be sure to check out ty spalding on twitter if you're not following already at ty spalding Uh, of course be sure to check out uofl rivals uh he is the owner and publisher of the site they've got great deals running all the times and now is the time to get on there man there's never been a better time of what we just heard here uh, of recruiting information that's going to be coming out so be sure to check that out and subscribe ty man i appreciate you taking your lunch break in the car to chat with me uh and we'll catch up soon brother Absolutely. And, you know, just just wanted to just add this in there. You know, everyone's support to the site allows us to, to pay for to pay it forward and to help the cause. We were able to make a, a nice donation to the 502 Circle uh, on behalf of the website. Thanks to everyone's support. Oh, yeah. um, so so look, you know, whether there's been information lulls, but whether there's been gaps in content at the end of the day, uh, your support allows us to help the cause. So I just wanted to add that in there. I appreciate you having me on, Jacob. And like you said, we'll catch up here soon. Awesome, man. Appreciate it.